Welcome, here we are in the Art Artistry House with uh, Andy and Lindsay hosting Norman Long at the Artistry House in Winkley Square in Preston. Uh, we're going to do a little tour, so for those of you who can't join us, those of you farther afield, those of you stuck inside, glad to have you with us today. Um, here in the empty way, bookish and splayed, kind of naughty little picture. Um, a little bit of symbolism of a, a spade in a bucket, but I'll leave the rest up to you to figure out. Um, this little collection over here. Yeah, is it really, is it? <laughs> yeah. I know you that. Yeah. Um, a little collection of uh, a couple of paintings from life, one from a photograph. I like the idea that you can't always tell which is which. Um, so on Tuesday evenings we hire a model in normal times and, and paint away. So these two are painted from models sat in the studio. This is a garden bench we had in the studio for a while um, for a bit of authenticity, but the backgrounds are invented. Um, I was going to say, excuse my focus pulling. It's not the best. Great. They're yeah, wonderful. Okay. Okay. Moving around the, the house. This is Winter Concourse 2. Um, it was finished and exhibited last year and then um, completely overhauled. I did a, an online course with an artist in America, Zoe Frank, and um, really inspired me to pursue paintings for longer. There's even a sense of pattern in here, which is really dangerous for me. I've never done pattern in my work at all. Um, I got a very gratifying email from a, a really good painter in America when I sent images of this work and others. He said, you're moving very fast and dangerously. And that was really, from a good painter, that was a huge compliment. It's interesting you say about patterns, because I, I see patterns in your work anyway. Really? Yeah, but yeah. obviously if the the... They're exaggerated patterns, I agree, but I, that's definitely I see patterns in here. In your work. Well, that's cool. A lot of this is about the tension between abstract and representation, like finding the figures rather than them being immediately revealed. Yeah. Um, so it's more of a process of discovery for the viewer. Um, like if you look at the, the face down here, the biggest area of contrast is at the edges with this colour and, and tonal contrast. But in the middle of the face, it's quite really close in colour. You might not even be able to see it on camera. But um, so it's about drawing attention away from the obvious things of the face, so that the it, yeah. painting becomes more of a discovery. I see it now. Yeah. Great. Cool. So some local views um, of Preston and Lytham. I expected there to be many more, but the um, situation deemed it otherwise. So. Uh, and you mean the COVID situation? Yeah, the COVID situation. Uh, I just started. This is painting right before lockdown in uh, Bistro Pierre in Preston. Um, this is in Bruciani's, which is sadly closed at the moment. Um, and. Uh, I didn't know it was closed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And these are these two in Lytham, uh, in the square in the centre of Lytham. This was New Year's Day. Just nice to get out at that time of year and, you know, with all the festivities going on, just go out and do a bit of painting. Um, so that's Stringers with the Christmas lights. Um, it's kind of nice to live in a posh place like Lytham. It's cool. You can observe people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, some of this work, uh, there's a nice connection between stuff that I set for my students, exercises for them to do, and inspiration from other artists and subjects that are around me. Often those things mesh together um, in a, an interesting way, like, uh, like this one and, and some other paintings were influenced by a guy called Patrick Lee, another American painter, who works on a square format and really figures out the darks and the light pattern before he even starts or it's really simple and very high keys so very light colours. So this was kind of an exercise. I just took a picture of Lindsay, my wife, on my phone, 
and edited it simply and then started with just yellow and white um, uh, like a yin and yang pattern and then developed it from there. So obviously it's a subject that's very close to me but it's a technique taken from somebody else and it's a task that I set my students. I never set my students a task that I don't do myself. So then it becomes this, all these things come together. But then it becomes very personal. Obviously, it's my wife, and, and um, I, I used to paint it loads from life, but now we've got three kids that doesn't work too much, too well. So um, anyway, it's nice to paint it. It's lovely, that. Right. Um, so this is uh, an exhibition in Lytham a couple of years ago. So I did a lot of work around the area. This is the Paradise Wall in Lytham Hall. Um, Lots of paintings of on the beach and Preston Marina. My focus pulling is atrocious. I don't know what focus pulling is. Just well, getting it in focus. <laughs> All right. I'll just walk around that way. Yeah. I mean, we, used to, we, we, were, we were concerned when I put this wallpaper up, is it going to work with art? But it's, oh, it's busy, but I don't know if it works. Yeah, I, I tended to use quite the ones in white frames in order yeah. to break the, the distance between the painting and the wall, but it does work, it's, yeah, it's cool. I think it particularly works with the little still lines in the corner, um, but we'll see them in a sec. This is Evening Park, not very far from here at all. Um, these are all lovely set on here. Yeah, these are all paintings from life. Um, on Tuesday evenings, accumulated over the years, almost every Tuesday night since 2014, and we stopped just recently, um, we'd have somebody sitting for us. Uh, the backgrounds are pretty much all invented, um, and it's, it's really nice to get them out and put them next to each other. Um, like this, this snooping cue and, and the rifle are all the same broom in the studio. It's not any, it's not a Stukachu Q or a rifle. It's just something to activate the hands to make yeah, them got you. asymmetrical. Um, and so the idea with me and Stukachu started with this one, and the fireplace and the background of the pub was just completely invented out of my head um, to make a sort of scenario. And then maybe two years later, a guy came in a waistcoat and again, it became a slightly different setting, but it's the same sort of story um, that, that comes out of simply them holding a sweeping brush. Um, so I like that sense of flying by the seat of your pants and inventing as you go along. So I think these work really well with the, uh, with the wallpaper. You know, the kind of echoing of the pattern between that and that. Um, these are, we've got apples in the garden and so I wanted to do something with them and Lindsay's grandfather, who just died recently actually, gave us this wonderful um, tablecloth that's all spots, coloured spots. So I ended up putting the apples on the spots and these paintings look really simple but they take a very long time because the apples all get moved and replaced so they get, these got replaced by other fruits. Um, I, I tried to have a little bit of fun with the titles. So this is Jackpot, because it's three in a row. And this is Take Five, which is one of my favourite pieces of jazz music. Um, so Great. I'd love to talk about this one, though. This tiny little painting here. Again, it's, it's um, from that time of doing square paintings that are based on really simple divisions of light and dark. So that's the technical side. But it's tea time at our tea table, and the boys are drinking fizz because they love fizz. Um, but the sunlight is coming through the window and it's bleaching out all the shadows. And I set my students the task of doing a red painting, and I was struggling for a subject. But the the darks in my vision were completely bleached out into a sort of red or orange. So then I did a little scribbles at tea time and wrote notes of the colours and took a couple of photographs and then after tea I shut off and and started this. Uh, so it's kind of a mixture of memory 
and imagination and drawing and notes and, and getting to it quickly enough that you get that impression. Um, and the little portraits of the boys, I don't know which ones they are, even though they're very suggestive. And it's also a portrait of light, really, the way the light leaches out from the central part and gets, it gets darker towards the edges. All right, so what you do when you've got nobody to paint is you paint yourself. Um, and it becomes a sort of strange investigation of your identity as well as a technical exploration. So I've got maybe another 15 of these in progress in the studio. And these were the ones that just appealed to me and I thought I'd, I'd share. Um, so some are more realistic than others. This one's fairly normal, Norman it's called. Um, this one is glimpsed self-portrait, so moving the pen to suggest the form without really defining the features. Um, these two are really strange. Again, it's from a discussion with the students, and one of them said um, he was doing a painting without light, and that idea was just so crazy for me that I had to try it. So um, I, I tried this one at the end, self-portrait without light in a darkened room, facing away from the light just to see what happened. Um, and this one is As I Am, which is a really weird one. It's trying not to paint what I see, but to paint what I think of myself. So the mouth is tilted the way my mouth is actually tilted, not the way it appears in the mirror. And I know that I've got stubble here, so I paint the stubble. And I know that my nose is kind of fat, so I paint a fat nose. and and I don't like the way that one eyebrow goes up, so I exaggerate it because I don't really like it. So it's a really sort of emotional um, experience painting that, also kind of funny, but it's against all my training. I've trained myself to just look at shapes and colours and to just paint them, not what your mind is telling you. But here I'm painting myself as I am, or as I think I am, so that's a bit crazy. Brilliant. Oh. Oh, here. No one's going to be throwing up watching this because I'm moving around all over the place. I <laughs> do apologise. It's all right. So this is, uh, again, a painting from life. This is Fiona, who's one of our great models. And the background is completely invented. She wasn't sat on a bench like this at all. She certainly wasn't sat out in the snow. Um, I remember, uh, often I'll place the figure in an odd position so that there's space either side just to create a scenario that you've got to do something with. So I remember driving to the studio one day, puzzling about this, thinking, well, how can I make it interesting or something? And it was snowing, so I just started to paint snowing, just put white paint on. And then these are based on cut photographs of the kids in the backyard playing in the snow. Um, but this sort of painting took probably three years on and off. Not because I'm constantly painting, but because I'll paint on it for a while and then not really know what to do next, so leave it aside. So hopefully the surface of the painting gives some evidence of that process of scraping it off, like this is scraped off and this is piled on and, and this is glazed over. And so the surface of the painting is really um, an evidence of the fact that it's not just painted quickly and confidently. It's figured out over a long period of time. Superb. I'm a bit dark on the stairs, but we'll go up. Yeah. Uh, this is a painting of my wife's niece, Phoenix, a while ago in the attic. Um, it's kind of a dark painting, and I'm not into dark painting, that many dark paintings, but it needed to be because it was an attic picture. And um, it's kind of mysterious, a little child walking down an attic. It's called Attic Adventure. And this is another painting from life, the empty chair. Again, putting, not just painting a portrait of a person, but trying to create a sense of a mood or a narrative. I visited my dad a lot in different homes and they always have these kind of wind armchairs and, and it's empty at the moment so um, it might be saying something it implies through his pose. I don't like to define exactly what what the story is because that's, that's for other people to make up but it definitely means things you to me. want to come over your shoulder, yeah? Yeah. yeah right? okay. I want to get a good view of the house, if nothing else. <laughs> I like this one. You do? Yeah. Oh, um, uh, 
So this is a self-portrait I did when I was at the Academy in America and it's painted in the classical style that we were taught. Um, you can see it, can't you? Yeah, yeah, it's quite different to, to how I paint now. But um, it's, it's good to learn the, the basics of stuff like that. Like um, American baseball player. Yeah, yeah, the baseball cap as well. And I did wear a goatee when I was over there, <laughs> which is uh, to, to blend in a bit. Um, this is a comedian who sat for us. Uh, this is painted over two sessions. His name's Willie, but I, I've not been able to find him on the internet. But yeah, he's an American from Washington, D.C. And he's a big guy. He's, he's a comedian. Uh, but his jokes are quite blue, so I'm not going to tell you any. <laughs> uh, it's great. I love the colour of it. Okay. So after a big exhibition last year, getting back in the studio, um, really with no idea of, of how to start again or what to work on, I, I just got a really few basic still life objects, cups and plates and things like that, and just set them up and started painting them. So these four paintings, um, and there's a couple more that didn't quite get finished, have come out of really strange genesis of almost pure invention at times and then just putting the paint on. A lot of the time I'd stick tape on them to figure out if it was better to be brown or white there. Um, and they've, so they've all got this, this unexpected uh, development. Um, like this one, when I went to, I love Five Guys, this American hamburger place. And, um, so I got the stuff from, from Five Guys and brought it back. And um, it's hard to explain how unrealistic these pictures are. Um, this one in particular is the last one that's finished. And it's more about, uh, most of the time it's spent away from the subject, trying to echo shape. So this is an echo of the egg shape. And this egg is almost, it's pretty much the same size as that egg, which it shouldn't be at all. Like spatially, it should be much smaller. but. I'm interested in how how shapes echo each other. This is the same little curved shape echoing all over the place. Um, so most of the time it's spent messing about with the paint and trying to figure it out. And then I put the object in place to make it look realistic as if it's just intended to be like that from the start. This is one of a series of large paintings of crowds. Um, who knows where that thought came from, but some of the Initial photographs were, we were down getting visas for the kids in London and it was the day of the tube strike. So there was twice as many people around as there normally was. And we were up in a pub looking down on all these people, just swarms of them. And one person is fascinating to me. So this idea of these thousands of people and all so individual and interesting. Um, so there's a little study over there and I realized that it's actually some of the same people, but they've moved into the other people and, and next to them and slotted in. And then as I do the painting, even if I start it from one photograph, people get replaced and invented. So it's in constant flux. So this is another painting that um, was completed, but then has been reworked more recently. Um, and it's the surface has got really crusty. Um, so yeah, and this is another little figure from life. Um, this, it's called shocked out so she just sat like that and it just seemed like she'd been shopping and um, you know came home pretty tired so there's always some sort of narrative that's, that appeals to me and I try to expand on that and just make something of it but not to tie it down for other people so um, these are little objects that we have around the house plenty of them boxes full of them um, random little toys so this is a little toy that, that Boston got. And I like to move his arms to see if he's got some character. And this one's called Trois Jeunes Picassos. I don't have a French accent, but three children who are all incredible at art, as all children are. And I just watch them and marvel at the pure, uninhibited creativity. These are my attempts at some squiggles. This is one of the paintings here that I've tried to reproduce. Um, so it's kind of fun trying to reproduce the randomness of their marks. It's impossible, but it's really great to try. And, and of course, Picasso said that whatever his quote was, you know, he could draw like a master when he was 13, but he spent the rest of his tribe 
trying to draw like a child. It's, it's very true. It's really true. It's uh, a great thing to try. Sometimes when you're just a bit more carefree, it just flows better, doesn't exactly. it? Exactly, yeah. So a series of skies. Uh, skies are impossible to paint. Um, They're impossible to pick up on the camera as well, folks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the detail um, you just can't see on here, unfortunately. Yeah. So these little ones are painted directly from the sky because the photographs don't capture the colour of the sky and its complexity and subtlety. So those are painted directly from the sky. And then as they get larger, they're more invented in the studio from drawings and photographs and the colour studies. And it gives you a chance to play around with the paint as well. So you, you can... Um, all sorts of wonderful techniques, lazing and scumbling and all these things. Um, even printing colours onto plastic and sticking them on the picture. Because we've got a tendency to make everything ordered and organised and even organise the clouds. Whereas they're terribly disorganised in truth. Um, so some sort of random process helps to disrupt that order that we tend to Im impose on things. Um, so. Top floor. Top floor, almost there. This is... Uh, this it, literally, it literally is a house takeover, isn't it? Like it is, know? it is a whole house. <laughs> Except the bathrooms. Except the bathrooms, yeah. Um, yeah, this is... Uh, the study for this one is downstairs. You can see the drips where I've sprayed it with paint and let the stuff flow along um, and the places where it's very thickly applied. Uh, it did have some writing up there. I was just listening to the radio and, and it had that song, Enjoy Yourself. It's later than the pink. Enjoy yourself while you are still in the pink. So I wrote still in the pink there because of the relationship to the painting. And you can do that as an artist. You can do any random thing you want without any reason to it. And other people will find reasons for it. Um, but, yeah, I'm trying to push towards abstraction and that sense of, of movement. So these are specific people, but I'm not painting portraits. I'm painting the sense of light and the excitement of light hitting the crowd, which I feel, particularly when I go to cities, um, it, it's just the most exciting thing ever to see sunshine on people. For me, there's no, no greater subject.